I am Sonia Sotomayor by Brad Meltzer, illustrated by Christopher Eliopoulos. From the Ordinary People Change the World series, I am Sonia Sotomayor by Brad Meltzer, illustrated by Christopher Eliopoulos. I am Sonia Sotomayor. In Spanish, that's Yo soy Sonia Sotomayor. I was born in New York City, and my family came from Puerto Rico. I learned to speak Spanish before I spoke English. My family called me Aji, which means hot pepper, because I was always jumping around and finding trouble. My mother used to say she learned to walk at seven months and ran the very same day. Even when my mother or my abuelita, my grandmother, dressed me up, my clothes would get wrinkled. Ribbons never stayed in my hair. You're already a mess. What should we do with her? There's nothing wrong with her. Just too much energy. One time, I got my head stuck in a bucket while I was trying to hear what my voice sounds like inside. Sonia, what have you done now? Hello in there. I also loved making up games, jousting like a knight with my little brother on my back. Charge! Crash! Sonia, what have you done now? One of my favorite places was my abuelita's apartment. Entering her home was like going straight to Puerto Rico. Once a month at abuelita's, my mom and my aunts would make sofrito, a spicy sauce. As they chopped peppers, onions, and tomatoes, I'd sneak to eat them right out of the blender. Sonia, what have you done now? Te vas enfermar. You'll get sick. You can't eat it raw. The grown-ups played lots of music and games, too, like dominoes. Tu estás ciego? That's right in front of your eyes. One of my favorite moments was when everyone would go quiet and my abuelita would perform for us. She looked so glamorous. We'd all be mesmerized as she read one of her favorite Puerto Rican poems by José Guater Benitez. Para poder conocerla, es preciso comparar de lejos en señores verla, y para saber que relea es necesario de llegar. To know it, you need to see it, in dreams from afar. To learn how to love it, you need to leave it. I understood what the poem meant. I had so many dreams. I would also like to apologize if I butchered that. I do not speak Spanish. When I was little, I used to imagine myself as the hero of my favorite book series, Nancy Drew, Girl Detective. Nancy was a master at doing puzzles, and no matter what got in her way, she could figure things out. She lived in a big house and solved crimes with her dad. Since he was a lawyer, he'd give her the best hints. Country club for dinner, my little blue roadster. I can't wait to be a detective when I grow up. In my neighborhood, dreams like that rarely came true. There weren't any detectives who looked like me. This is where I grew up. It's the Bronx, a neighborhood in New York City. Pretty different from Nancy Drew, huh? We didn't live in a fancy house. We lived in a small apartment. My mother was a nurse, so I knew some Puerto Rican nurses. But there was only one Puerto Rican doctor. At the stores where we shopped, there were a lot of Puerto Rican workers, but few managers or owners, and even fewer lawyers and detectives. It wasn't that my Puerto Rican neighbors didn't work hard. People aren't poor because they're lazy. My mother worked long hours to pay our bills, but sometimes where you live affects the kind of opportunities you have. If you live in a nice neighborhood, like Nancy Drew, 
you can go to a school like this. That looks nice and safe. But if you live in a neighborhood like mine, you get a school that has fewer supplies and isn't as safe. That definitely isn't nice. Welcome to the Bronx. My mom worked extra hours so she could pay to send my brother and me to a more respected school where we'd get a better education. But even with a good school, my young life was still pretty complicated. When I was nine years old, I was diagnosed with diabetes, a disease that means your body keeps too much sugar in your blood. You'll be okay, but you'll have to get a shot every day. I was strong. I could handle the shot. Something even harder happened later that year. My father died. It was like an earthquake in my life. My world started to change and felt scary. One of the ways I found comfort was doing what you're doing right now, reading. I loved books. Books gave me a rocket ship, not only around the world, but through the world. This book that a doctor lent to me was my favorite. It was filled with stories of Greek gods and heroes. In that book, I learned that my name was a version of Sophia, meaning wisdom. Those days were hard for my mom. She had to pay for two kids all by herself, but it didn't slow her down. She ordered us a full set of Encyclopedia Britannica. When it arrived, it was like an early Christmas. Twenty-four volumes in our house on every topic? I got the Fs. Fauna, Flora, Florida. I got the Ms. Mitosis, Meiosis, Mendel's Garden of Peas. Tell me what's not in these books. You've got to get your education. It's the only way to get ahead in the world. Each book was so heavy. It was like we lived in a library. The books were expensive, too. My mom struggled to make the payments. But with the encyclopedia, the world expanded before me in a thousand new directions. There was another reason why my world continued to change. My teachers. Every teacher has the power to inspire us kids. This one realized I love to compete and win. That's Mrs. Riley. She put a gold star on the blackboard when you did something well. Nice job, Sonia. You too, Donna. One gold star for each of you. I wanted those stars. I wanted to collect them all. The first time I got an A grade on my report card, I made a promise to myself. I would add one more A each time. With grades like that, I was on my way to becoming a detective. Did that mean everything was suddenly easy? Not in my neighborhood. Where we lived, if you didn't lock up your bike, it usually got stolen. And if you walked down the wrong alley, someone might try to beat you up. Once, I found my little brother surrounded by bullies, so I walked over to protect him. If you're going to beat him up, you gotta beat me up too. My sister was tough as nails. That didn't mean I couldn't be hurt. One day, I was reading about diabetes. It said that people with diabetes, like me, could be a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, even a teacher. But because of my disease, you can't be a police officer. What? If I couldn't be a police officer, I couldn't be a detective, which meant I couldn't be like Nancy Drew. I was devastated, but I wasn't defeated. I quickly found a new role model on a TV show. He was a lawyer named Perry Mason. He used his smarts in the courtroom to figure out the truth behind each crime. This man is innocent. He must get justice. So the lawyer is the hero? Perry Mason was definitely the hero of the show. But I was more fascinated by a different character. The judge. Every episode, no matter what Perry Mason was trying to do, it was the judge who made the final decision. Look, nothing happens until the judge says so. 
Perry Mason can't do anything until he asks the judge for permission. Whatever you say, Ahi. It's the most important moment of the show. It was hard to understand every detail, but I could tell that with each case was like a good puzzle, a complicated game with its own rules. From there, I knew I could be a great lawyer, even a great judge. To be a judge, I had to learn to speak in front of others. My first practice session was in church, doing a Bible reading. Good speakers have to look at people and make eye contact. But I was so nervous, I used this trick. I stared at people's foreheads instead. They had no idea. I did it, and I knew I could do it again. In high school, I joined forensics, which trains you to public speaking and debate. I won first prize in speaking contest, but I also learned that one of the most important parts of making a good argument is being a good listener. My talk was about how we have a responsibility to look out for each other. Yet, perhaps the best thing I learned in forensics came from one of the student coaches. A counselor at school had told me to apply to a local college, but the coach told me I could go farther. Try for the Ivy League. Aim for one of the top colleges like Harvard, Yale, or Princeton. But those are some of the best schools in the country. My parents never even went to college. It sounded impossible. I didn't think kids from the South Bronx could go to fancy schools like Princeton. Princeton. But like my Abuelita's poem said, to get what you want, you must dream it. What are you doing, Ahi? Applying to Princeton. I was valedictorian of my high school class. But would they accept me? I got in! I'm going to Princeton! Princeton seemed like a different planet. Most of the kids here came from wealthy neighborhoods and fancy schools. They were used to skiing trips, tennis lessons, and vacations in Europe. I'd barely ever left the Bronx. Whoa, Sonia, what have you done now? I'm not exactly sure, Mommy. That first week at college, I couldn't sleep because I heard a cricket in my room. Sonia, it's not in your room. It's outside on the tree. In New York, we didn't have trees outside our windows. Even though I got really homesick, I again found that books made me feel better. Here in the Firestone Library, I saw just how much knowledge there was in the world. During my time at Princeton, I did so well they invited me into Phi Beta Kappa, an honor society that recognizes top students. I almost threw away the invitation, thinking it was a fake jewelry scam. It says here I made summa cum laude? That's amazing! You excited? Of course I'm excited. What's summa cum laude? It means with highest honor in Latin. That means you got some of the best grades at the whole school. I had never heard of any of these awards they gave me, including the Pine Prize, the most prestigious award at Princeton Senior can win. To some people, athletes or astronauts are heroes. To me, the best action hero was a lawyer. That's what I wanted to be. So after graduation, I went to Yale Law, the top law school in the country. A lawyer's job is to help people. You can use the law as a force for good, as a way to protect the community, and to help make peace. people make peace. During my third year at law school, I walked by a meeting that was offering free snacks. I was a bit hungry, so I stepped inside, stumbling into a presentation that would change my life. I know lawyers can make a lot of money in a law firm, but I'd like you to consider a public service job where you can help people and seek justice in a courtroom. Robert Morgenthau, NY District Attorney. Seek justice in a courtroom? That's what Perry Mason used to do. Inspired by my old dreams, I became an assistant district attorney. As a prosecutor, 
My job was to find the truth, and to make sure that if someone committed a crime, they didn't get away with it. When I started, there were so few Hispanic and female prosecutors, the other lawyers would ask me, When's your boss getting here? I am the boss. It didn't stop me from doing my job. I just had to convince the jury to agree with me. This man is a thief. He should be punished. Do you know the real reason juries loved Sonia? She could talk to all people, young, old, rich, poor, people of all races and backgrounds. Sonia understood everyone. I also understood that when people don't get along, it's usually because they can't imagine how someone else is feeling. From there, I had a few different jobs as a lawyer, until one day I heard that the U.S. District Court in Manhattan was looking for a new judge. You have to apply, Sonia. I don't know. That's a really tough job to get. You'd be perfect. My boss was so determined, he put the application on my desk and made sure I had no other work that would get in my way of it. This was my dream, wasn't it? Of course it was, and it was coming true. I became the city's first Hispanic federal judge, and the youngest as well. Now my job was to make sure that in each case people followed the laws correctly. During my very first trial, I was so nervous, my knees were actually knocking. All rise. Your Honor, we have a question. Once the case got started, my panic passed. I was ready to do my job, and also ready for what was coming next when I was promoted to the Court of Appeals. Soon, I was considered for the biggest legal job of all, being a justice on the Supreme Court of the United States. That's the court where the most important cases are decided. The justices are the ones who make those decisions. I was worried that the job would change my life. But a friend told me, Sonia, this is not about you. This is about the little girls and boys, brown and black, who have lived in poor communities around the nation. They can dream bigger if you are on the Supreme Court. It made me think about the South Bronx. It made me think that there were no Hispanic female lawyers for me to follow at Princeton, Yale, the district attorney's office, or even as a judge. It made me think about all the people I could inspire. When I was little, did I ever dream about being a Supreme Court justice? You can't dream about what you don't know about. If I wanted others to have this dream, I needed to show them it was possible. On October 8th, 2009, at 55 years old, I was sworn in as the first Hispanic and third female justice to ever serve on the Supreme Court of the United States. During the ceremony, I made sure that my mother was standing right between me and the Chief Justice. When I told reporters how much of a role she played in my accomplishments, my mother humbly said she didn't know what she did. But I do. Remember, no one is self-made. No matter who you are, everyone gets help from someone. Sonia, what have you done now? Chief Justice John Roberts In my life, I was the ahi, the hot pepper, the one who couldn't slow down. Because of where I was from, because I was poor and Latina, some people didn't think I would go far. But there were others who helped my dreams come to life. They gave me opportunities and reminded me to keep going. Those are the people you need to listen to. Pay attention to the ones who believe in you. The more you learn, the farther you'll go. Education is a rocket ship. It can take you anywhere. But no matter how high you fly, never forget where you started. Today, Justice Sotomayor is still uses many of her public speeches to talk to women's or minority groups. She's also been on Sesame Street twice. Justice Sotomayor tries to end each day asking two questions. What did I learn new today? And what act of giving did I do today? If she didn't learn something new, she reads. If she didn't do any giving, she sends an email to someone she cares about. Don't worry about whether your dream will come true. 
A good dream will always stir something amazing inside you. Whether it's in English, Spanish, or any other language, our dreams are often the same. A loving family, kind friends, a safe place to call home, and the chance to reach our potential. The world outside your window is a starting point, but there's so much more beyond that. Read, study, do right by people. No matter where you're born, there's no limit to what you can accomplish. I am Sonia Sotomayor. Yo soy Sonia Sotomayor. I am proof that with opportunity comes justice. Remember that no one succeeds alone. Sonia Sotomayor. And at the top we have a picture of the lovely Judge Soto, Sonia Sotomayor. At the bottom we have our timeline. June 25th, 1954. Born in New York City. 1963. Is diagnosed with diabetes. 1972. Graduate graduates as valedictorian of Cardinal Spellman High School in the Bronx, New York, 1976, graduates from Princeton University, 1976, marries Kevin Noonan, they divorce seven years later, 1979, graduates from Yale Law School, 1992, becomes U.S. District Court Judge, 1998, becomes U.S. Court of Appeals Judge, August 8, 2009, sworn in as First Hispanic Supreme Court Justice of the United States. And in our top left photo, we have Sonia with her brother and mother being sworn in as Supreme Court Justice. Top right, we have Sonia as a Princeton student. And in the bottom photo, we have the U.S. Supreme Court of Justices of 2018.